Well, good evening, and let me be the first to wish you a Merry Christmas. We are so glad you're all here. Um, before we begin our service, though, there's some uh, technical details that need to be covered so we can get them out of the way now. I won't have to do it in the middle of service. Um, a couple of things. When we have communion, if you are gluten intolerant, there are some gluten-free um, crackers over here. So make sure and come to this side because it's the only side they're on. Okay. Um, let's see. There was another technical thing. Oh, yeah, the other thing. You're free to use your hymnals that are in the, underneath the chair or in front of you, hopefully somewhere nearby, or the words will all be up here for the whole evening. So uh, if you want to do parts and want to use a hymnal, that would be great because we love to hear parts. Uh, but if you just want to sing the melody and you want to just look up and read, you wouldn't believe how much better it sounds when people are singing out like this rather than down like this. <laughs> um, let me think. Oh, somebody just reminded me. Make sure your cell phones are off, please. Because um, that's always a distraction uh, in the middle of our service. We just counted a privilege to uh, have this as one of the special events of our church year. Um, it raises uh, old memories, uh, a lot of fond appreciation for Christmas's past, um, and, and we hold it dear. We do try, as a, if you read the bulletin as you came in, to tweak things just a bit. And this week, or this year, we've been going through the book of Hebrews on Sunday morning since September. And so uh, we tried to incorporate some of what's in Hebrews, which does not typically have anything to do with Christmas or Advent, um, but the themes of hope, peace, joy, and love are traditional of the four Advent candles. And so we've included a brief reading from Hebrews uh, to uh, remind us uh, that those themes are not just about this evening when we remember the birth of our Savior, but they're supposed to be part of our Christian lives throughout the year. Uh, hope and peace and joy and love um, are the essence of what it means to be fully human. So we're just glad you're here. We hope you'll just participate as boldly. Um, Martin Luther was famous for when you sin, sin boldly. Uh, for years, we have paraphrased that to, if you're going to sing, sing boldly, okay? And, um, and the special music and the readings, it, it will all just be wonderful. Let's pray as we begin. Our loving Father, again, we come to you this evening on this special night, and uh, we join with those around the world, um, some of them in homes, home churches, some of them meeting in magnificent cathedrals. Um, some meeting under fear of persecution, even martyrdom. We get to enjoy a great freedom uh, to come before you and to worship. And so we just thank you for that. May this time be a blessing uh, to you and to us as we remember the birth of a Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you'd like to join us by standing, a uh, traditional opening hymn on the Christmas Eve night during this Christmas season, O Come All Ye Faithful. Oh, come, all ye faith.
the people who walked in darkness have seen the great light. Those who dwell in dar- the land of deep darkness, on them has the light shone. For us a child is to is born. Us to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. God swore an oath so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of this hope and set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the for the soul firm and secure. So let us hold unswervingly to hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, didn't know who you Didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes were blind, they could not see. We didn't know who you Long time ago, you were born, born in a manger low, sweet little Jesus boy. The world treat you mean, Lord, treat me mean too, but please, sir, forgive us, Lord, we didn't know it was you. Sweet little Jesus boy, born long time ago. Sweet little holy child, and we didn't know it was you. At this time, if you'll take your hymnals or look up at the screen, we'll turn to 136, the first Noel.
Amen. Well, at this time, I would like to invite my family up here, who <coughs> up until about 15 minutes ago did not know they were coming up here. <laughs> I like surprises. Okay. Come on up. Okay, you're going to read right here, all right? So you can get to that point. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And, Ma and Mary said to the angel, How will I be this since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth in the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am a servant to the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will ever see the Lord. Oh, we need to light a candle. <laughs> You'd think I work here or something. Let's let mommy light a candle, okay? One of the purple ones.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken o of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of, town of David, because he belonged to the line, the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was put pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds. And there were shepherds living out in in the flocks nearby, keep, keeping walk, watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. The <coughs> The Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying cloths and lying, lying in the, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, "Glory to the God." in the highest, in heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It still amazes me that the Lord of all creation came and was born and laid in a manger. Anyway, that's what this song is sort of about. Way in a manger, no crib or bed. This little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. Our little Lord Jesus asleep on the cattle are lowing, the baby wakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till morning is night. Near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care to take us to heaven to live with thee there. Please take us to heaven to live with thee
When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that was that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. And let us consider how we may spur one another unto our love and good deeds, and keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters.
again, turn with me to number 141, A Little Town of Bethlehem. Everyone should know this <coughs> This is this is how the birth of Jesus, the, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant, pregnant, pregnant through the Holy Spirit, because Joseph, Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disagree. He had minded divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to ful fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the Virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased.
just want to sing this song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift. With every breath I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah, and hallelujah, and hallelujah. Expecting child, they search the end to find a place where you are coming soon. There was no room for him to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only son was born. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angel said, you'll find him in a manger bed. shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem the wise men three came miles and journeyed long for you and to the place at which you were their frankincense and gold and myrrh they gave to you and cried out hallelujah hallelujah Sins would drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too. Still every breath you drew was hallelujah. I think it's very appropriate that we move from that last verse to a time of remembering the Lord's death. And it may seem strange to some of you that on this night when we remember his birth that we also partake of the communion and remember his death, but it's a reminder that from the very beginning the shadow of the cross was behind everything that happened in Jesus' life. Within just eight days after Jesus' birth, his parents took him to the temple in Jerusalem, and 
had him dedicated to the Lord. And it was there that the old Saint Simeon told Joseph and Mary what would happen with this child, that he would be a stumbling stone, he would be a turning point, that he would expose the hearts of people. And he turned to Mary and he said, and a sword will pierce your heart too. That sword, that suffering was always there from the very beginning. And so when we come and remember his death, it's an appropriate night to do that. And so we have set out the elements of communion, the bread and the cup. And we're reminded that Jesus took those elements and he transformed their meaning um, from that of the blood of a lamb to the ultimate blood of the Lamb of God. The body broken, um, he said to his disciples, this is for you, this is me being broken for you. And so we come up here and remember that. And so we just ask that you come up. And the way we do this is we ask you to move to the middle and then go across either side and then go back to your seat. But tonight's a little bit unique in the way that we do this because if you are sitting and waiting, we ask you to join us in singing the songs that will be up here on the overhead. Um, one of them is a song that can only happen this time um, of the year. It's the only chance we get to sing it, a communion hymn for Christmas. And uh, so as you come up and take communion, go back to your seats, please join in the choir. Um, it's a constant reminder um, as people are in line and waiting and taking communion um, of the Christmas season in which we celebrate his death. Let's pray. Lord, we stop as Jesus did that night and give you thanks. Give you thanks for this evening, uh, for this celebration. Thank you, Lord, for the families um, that have come up and shared the story. Thank you for the musicians uh, that you have gifted with such talent. And Lord, we thank you for this meal, uh, this symbolic representation of your body and blood, the sacrifice, the gift that was your son. And Lord, may we always remember um, that birth leads to death, but that because of your death, life came a resurrected life, a promised life that will endure forever. We just thank you for the hope uh, that is in that, for the love expressed um, in you, and remembering the joy that Jesus saw in the future, not in the moment, but far distant into the future. And Lord, that we can know your peace as a result. Again, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And again, I know we have many visitors. We practice an open communion. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if you're trusting him for your life now and forever, uh, feel free to come up and partake of communion. For these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let's pause. Lord, again, we thank you for all that these elements mean. The tremendous love that is behind their gifting to us. And we just, again, can't express enough all that they mean. But we're thankful. We're grateful for this evening. We're grateful for that life. We're grateful for that death. And we're grateful for the resurrection life that is promised. A life that will endure and last forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've heard the story told as the prophets predicted, as Matthew and Luke described in their Gospels, but there's one remaining story that we need to tell, and that's the story that John, the writer of his Gospel, tells us at the beginning of his Gospel. It's not a birth narrative necessarily, but it is an important reminder of why Jesus came into the world. So hear his words. In the beginning was the word... And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. 
And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus came as the light into the world. And John witnessed to that light. And he, and John, or that is Jesus and God, gave us the right to become children of light. And so the way that Jesus shines forth in the world when we go away from here is through us. And so we hold the light and we radiate the light of Jesus. And so it's our tradition to symbolize that. As we close, we're going to sing Silent Night, Holy Light, and the lights are going to go down. And we're going to pass this light from the front to the back until we are all singing and holding the light, in essence, being the light. And it's symbolic because we take the light from the Christ candle, because it's Christ who dwells in us, the light, so that we can shine forth his light to the world. So let's stand, and we're going to sing Silent Night, Holy Night. If somebody could hit the lights on the way out, there you go, thank you.